Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 120 instructor for the Community College of Denver. And this is our video lecture over section 2.1, which introduces uh, set theory. So in 2.1, we're going to um, introduce some basic set concepts. So we have a bunch of object objectives, uh, and we'll just go over them individually. So a set. A set is a collection of objects whose contents can be clearly determined. Um, really, I like to just think of a set as a collection of objects. Uh, sometimes we'll write letters, numbers, things. Elements or members are the objects in a set. Okay, so a collection of elements is a set. A set must be well-defined, meaning that its contents can be clearly determined. The order in which the elements of the set are listed is not important. So methods for representing sets. Capital letters are generally used to name sets. So, uh, uh, and sometimes we have a word description describing the members. So we say set W, W is the capital letter, is, set, is the set of the days of the week. This is well defined because I can list out the days of the week. Um, using the roster method, I can list them out Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And commas are used to separate the elements of each set. We use braces here uh, that are used to designate that the enclosed elements form a set. Uh, write a word description of the set. So here we have the set P, Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Madison, Monroe. Um, set is set P is the, if we were to describe this uh, with the sentence, is the set of the first five presidents of the United States. Um, representing a set using the roster method. So write C using the roster method, or write the Right, using the roster method. Set C is the set of US coins with a value of less than a dollar. Express this set using the roster method. So we're just going to list them out. So we say C is penny, nickel, dime, quarter, half dollar. Set builder notation is a different way to write sets for longer sets or sets that have really long lists, many, many elements. So W, instead of listing out the days of the week like this, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we can just say W is a set of elements such that those elements are days of the week. So usually we use a variable for this, this set builder notation. And this, this line here, this vertical line is just such that. So here's, the, here's what the elements, the elements are just individual things. And here's the rule for the elements. So we say set W is the set of all elements X, such that X is a day of the week. Um, it says express the set using the roster method. So we have this in set builder notation. It says X or A is the set, sorry, excuse me. A is the set of things such that those things are a month that begins with the letter M. So we need to figure out the months that begin with the letter M and we can list them out. That's what roster method means. So we have March and May. So we list those out. There they are. The empty set is going to be somewhat of an important set, not super important, but you do want to understand the notation for it. Sometimes called the null set is a set that contains no elements. There's two ways to represent it. If we just put the brackets with nothing inside or we do a zero with a slash through it, really means no elements, no elements. The empty set, no elements. So here's some examples of uh, empty sets. The set of all numbers less than four and greater than 10. Are there any numbers that are less than four, like three, two, one, zero negative numbers and also greater than 10? No, because the numbers greater than 10 are 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, etc. So that's an empty set. Um, or we can say the set of X, X is a fawn that speaks. I think a fawn is a bird. I hope I don't look too stupid, but I think that's what it is. And so um, maybe they're talking speaks English. So that's an empty set. Um, another couple tricks where you, you will see um, that look like empty sets, but they're not. This is, is, is A the empty set? No, because A is the set with the element zero. And B is not even a set in the first place because there's no brackets. All right, uh, okay, here we go. This is C, we already went over. The number that great, less than four or greater than 10 is an empty set. D, um, the set of elements where 
the element is a square with three sides. Well, that's impossible. Those are only triangles. So both of those are... Uh... Oh, excuse me, excuse me. No, letter C. Oh, goodness, I didn't read this correctly. So C is not the empty set because this is numbers less than 4 or greater than 10, which is different than less than 4 and greater than 10. Uh, there's no numbers that are less than 4 and greater than 10 at the same time, but there are numbers that are less than 4, like 3, 2, 1, or greater than 10. They don't have to be both. They can be either or. Uh, D is definitely an empty set, like I went over. Uh, all right, then you're also going to have to be comfortable with the notation of being an element of a set and not being an element of a set. So the symbol here is used to indicate that an object is an element of the set. Um, the symbol E is used to replicate the words is an element of, and then we put a slash through it to indicate that the object is not an element of the set. So uh, determine whether each statement is true or false. Is R an element of this set? Well, you see the dot, dot, dot here. This really just means that this pattern continues until it ends here at Z. So this would really just be the alphabet. And R definitely is an element of that set. So that's true. Is seven not an element of this set? Well, this is just the numbers one through five. So seven is not an element of that set. That's also true. And is A an element of the set A comma B? Definitely. Or wait a minute. No, this is, a, a, sorry. This is the set. Is the set an element of this set? And a set cannot be an element of the set. So that's false. Notice uh, that this has brackets around it, so it's a set. So a set cannot be an element of another set. Um, another set that we'll see a lot of is the set of natural numbers, which are just the, essentially our counting numbers that start at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and go on forever. You'll see the dot, 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 which just means um, that the pattern goes on forever up by 1s. So natural numbers are just our counting numbers. So it says express each following sets as a, uh, using the roster method. So set A is the set of natural numbers less than 5. So that's just going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. When we say less than 5, we don't include 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Set B is the set of natural numbers greater than or equal to 25. Well, greater than or equal to 25 includes 25, but it goes uh, up and up and never stops. So you'll see this dot, dot, dot at the end saying that it just continues forever and ever. What this also means is that this set is infinite, that it has an infinite number of elements. And then the last set, E, X is uh, the set element of, or E, the set of elements such that it's a natural number and it's even. So we're talking about two, four, six, eight, and, and et cetera. And that's what we'll see there. So sometimes we'll see inequalities. This won't be a huge thing for us, but uh, if we say this inequality symbol means less than A, which does not include A, this symbol is less than or equal to A, which is less than A and includes A, and these are the opposites. Greater than A is numbers larger than A but not including A, and greater than or equal to is including A and above A. These are betweens. This stuff isn't super important, but if you want to write that down, that's fine. Express each of the following sets using the roster method. So we have the set of natural numbers and it's less than or equal to 100. So that's really 1 through 100. And we're going to have to do a dot, dot, dot in the middle to show that it keeps going after 1 and ends at 100. Set B is the set of natural numbers that are between 70, including 70, and less than 100, not including 100. So we're going to start at 70, 71, 72, 73, dot, 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 and we'll end at 99 because we're not including 100. Um, and then sometimes I just, you know, we'll talk about whether sets are infinite, finite or infinite. Uh, a finite set is uh, if the number of elements in A is zero or the number of elements in A is a natural number. So if, basically, if we can count the number of elements in the set, it's finite. Um, and, if, and, and eventually we'll be able to stop. An infinite set is a set whose cardinality is not zero or a natural number is called an infinite set. So infinite set is just, you know, goes on forever. We, we won't ever be able to stop counting the number of, of elements in the set. So this, will, this is the beginning of our set notation. We'll continue it in 2.2.